people tell us that they live in Dallas. We all prick up our ears when they do appear. Living in Dallas, it is as well as to live in a dream you've never seen. There's oil in the soil, yes, the soil's full of oil. They've got lots of money and their life is so sunny. They are very funny and they do call you honey. When people tell us that they live in Dallas, we break up our ears before they disappear. Yeah. Hey, hey, buzz off, boys. That's my part now. Here comes my solo. Day in, day out, they're drilling for oil. Yes, they have so much oil in the soil. The other people may grow wheat, but here they are pumping oil in the heat. While others let the time go by, go by. People in Texas are scraping the sky. The people here ain't standing still. Day in, day out, they drill and drill. Oil, so much oil. Oil in the soil, under the sun, for everyone. Oil, so much oil, oil in the soil, under the sun, for everyone. Yes, people, they are villages located in Texas. I can't wait to see if you recognize the Dream Express. <laughs> Uh, yeah, a ranch. A ranch like in the good old times. But this man isn't a farmer anymore. Mm. Nowadays, everything revolves around oil. Yeah. Blue, tell us your name. I am P.R. Chewing. Uh, hmm. Between you and me, he's a nasty customer. And here, we have the lady of the house, Mrs. Blue Ellen Chewing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How are things going with all your money? Well, Mr. Spencer, if you oh. had that much money, you wouldn't talk about it. <laughs> <sighs> so I better stop talking about it. And here comes another Chewing. The younger brother, Robbie, with his lovely wife, Famila. I hope you two are also happy with all your wealth. Yes, but my part in this fairy tale is so small, and my breath itchy, itchy. Mona, pay attention. Huh? You should give us the answer as family chewing, right? Oh, right. Okay, Mr. Spencer, I love my wealth. <laughs> Any problems, Mr. Chewing? Yes, it bothers me that I'm the owner of so many cars. This Robbie Chewing owns five cars, but all I can drive is my hand cart. Well, Mr. Chewing, if that's the only thing bothering you, people, everybody seems to be happy here. I think nothing bad can happen anymore. But if somebody has a lot of money, he wants even more. And then a lot of things could happen. Come on, Spencer. Let's have a walk through our wonderful city of Dallas. Walk? No, we'll drive. The city has some extra class. In Texas, we have cars a mass. Well, somewhere else, the rape field blooms. In Texas, it's the oil that booms. The oil is almost everywhere. Yeah, it's here and there, and there and there. Yeah, the people here ain't standing still. Day in and day out, they drill and drill. Oil, so much oil, oil in the soil, under the sun, for everyone. Oil, so much oil, oil in the soil, under the sun, for everyone. People, here we have the adversary of Payard Chewing, Mr. Clark Burns. Hey, Spencer, when will I meet my arch enemy, Payar? I want to clobber and tackle him. <laughs> Keep cool, Baldy. Keep cool. Just wait. We won't forget you. This beautiful blockhouse belongs to the Chewings, too. Yeah. What's gray? Here, we reach the station house of Officer Compey. Well, what's my name? 
Oh, I'm sorry. Your name is Kapowski, of course. Yeah. He's our sheriff. And he's his own deputy, too. And who can I tie up now? Oh, not now, but sooner or later you'll find somebody who you can tie up. <laughs> Lucky uh, them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> now, more important than the sheriff is possibly the lawyer. Hello, Dr. Lexington. What are you working on right now? Oh, I'm just proving that Payot Chewing is poor as a mouse. He ain't got enough money to pay his taxes. People, we continue with Cluck Burns at the Crater Field. You should try this wonderful oil, sister. Oh, no. No oil between meals. Mm. You should know that I have to watch my figure. But you should smell it at least. Oh, oh, Cluck, you really are a clumsy oaf. Whoa. Yes, but now tell me if the oil smells good. It smells wonderful, but now I must go home to change my blouse. Then you can tell your sister-in-law, Blue Ellen, whom I admire very much, that I invite her to a salad dressed with the finest Italian salad oil one can imagine. And as a garnish, I will serve chicken wings. Why don't you tell her yourself, huh? No, no way. What if her husband picks up the phone, and he is my arch enemy, huh? You must tell her. She won't come anyway. <sighs> Why must it be the wife of your arch enemy you adore most? Well, you never know when love strikes you, sister. I will tell her. Goodbye, Brother Clock. Well, goodbye, sister. Was that okay, Spencer? Oh, Pauldy, the scene isn't over yet. No? Ah. But I've spoken all my lines. Yes, but now you must act as if you're in love with Blue Ellen. Oh, yeah, sure. How should I look when I'm in love? Like that? I, uh... No, a bit more love. Like that? Uh, more, more, uh, more. That's all uh, I can offer you or else I'll tip uh, over. Okay, Cody. Now, now the camera will zoom very slowly in uh -huh. to your being in love. Look. Music, music, and cut to the chewing's house. Oh, hello, sister-in-law. Brother-in-law? <laughs> Where have you been? I was at my brother's in his cellar. Oh, at my arch enemies in the cellar. Your arch enemy is my brother, after all. I can smell a lot of money. Huh? Brother-in-law. Hey, brother. Oh, what are you doing yeah. smelling my what? wife? Oh. Hey, R. Can't even your sister-in-law be safe with you? Huh, I'm smelling oil, and this is my business. Huh. Blue Allen, I must talk with you urgently. Listen, brother, I have proof that Clock Burns is sitting on his fat fanny on top of the richest oil deposits in Texas. Oh, uh -huh. and do you have proof of that? It's in the clothes of your lovely wife. Oh. She's been in Clock's cellar. Uh, and what'll you do? Shh. I gotta eavesdrop on their chat. Must have something to do with it. <laughs> I'd really love to be invited by Clock to a salad with Italian oil dressing <clears throat> and with chicken wings. But I can't do it to pay R. They're arch enemies. You have no internet considerate, sister in law. Ah, Robbie, put everything you need for a trial drilling on the pickup and bring Teddy along. I will lure Clock away from his crater field. But we will not do crooked business. Robbie, we never do crooked business. Blue Ellen! Oh, pay off. If I were you, I would accept Clock Burn's salad invitation, but not at his place. How about a picnic at the Crossing? Okay, if you allow that. Hey! How come you know about the invitation? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, uh, that, uh, uh, Pamela told what? me. Uh, you have told Pay R? No, I haven't said a single word to him. Not a word. Pay R, you've been listening in? 
We must go now. I'll drop you off at the crossing, okay? But first I must tell him that I accept the invitation. We have no time for that. Uh, I'll see him anyway. I'll tell him. Why am I doing all this? It's a waste of time anyway. Llewellyn is the wife of my arch enemy. She will never, ever eat this salad, huh? Hey, Clock Burns! You still here, eh? Why shouldn't I be? This is my own property. Well now, you've invited my wife to a salad, haven't you? She's waiting at the crossing for your picnic. But she hasn't accepted yet. Well then, let me tell you that she has. Are you just gonna sit there and let Blue Ellen wait? No, I better get my skates on then. Well, hey, you should take the salad with you. Yeah, that's a good idea. And the chicken wings too. Now, boys, oh. start the trial drilling. Right, where, where shall I begin, boss? Well, wherever you like. Main oh, thing oh, is, oh. oh! Hang on, hang on. We can't do that, Payar. We can't just drill holes on foreign ground. But we will buy the whole crater field afterwards. Right now, it belongs to Clock Burns. Oh, Robbie, you are always so nitpicky. No, oh. no, 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 no. Here is the borderline. The blockhouse belongs to us. We can drill from here diagonally into the crater field. Okay, sir, I'll do it like that. No. <laughs> Robbie, if this works, we just put a lot of money in here, and we'll get much more money out of it. <laughs> I think we're all ready so I can go. What? So soon, huh? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if in a minute it'll start bubbling up like crazy here. You should try it, Robbie. Yeah, go ahead, smell it. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Say, fella, how much oil do you think is here? Oh, not easy to say, but it must be quite a lot since we struck gold that quickly. Oh, oh yeah. struck gold! Uh, oil! I'll buy it! Camera must zoom in on me now. I'm the director here, and I will say that. <laughs> Music? Camera zooms in on greedy payor. Huh? And we continue at the crossing. Clock. Never in my life have I tasted a delicious salad oil like this one. For the most beautiful woman in the world, the best salad oil in the world. And the tender chicken wings. Heavenly. Clock Burns, how about selling me your crater field? I'll give you two million for it, and I'll pay cash. Hmm. Two million? For my dry craters? <laughs> what do you mean dry? The oil is bubbling up like mad there. Huh? Why are you interrupting me? You are fired. What? Dismissed without notice. Huh. That's what you call gratitude. Clock Burns, well, well, just, two uh... million dollars. Not so fast, partner. If you don't sell it willingly, you'll be forced to. You can't blackmail me, Payar. Blue Allen, go home. What? Since Clock won't sell his field, you mustn't eat his salad. Huh. He treats me like a simple domestic. Yes, but I must go now, too. Ah, oh, you men are all the same. Oh. Ma'am, here in Texas, we always say, First oil, then love. Music, please. Camera takes a slow zoom in on Lulu. And we continue at the crater field. I'll find something, even if I have to dig up everything here. Huh? Looky, look! Da! They've drilled right here. Crossways into my own ground. Just you wait. I'll go and tell the sheriff. Sheriff! Sheriff! Hey, sheriff! Yeah, so 
what's up? Sheriff, you must arrest Mr. Chewing immediately. Yeah. He has drilled crossways into my crater field. You there they are. are. Huh? Sheriff? Sheriff? Yeah? You must immediately put Mr. Clark in chains. He has guzzled my beloved wife. What? Oh. <laughs> huh? I'm going to have to arrest you right now for guzzling but, women. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, but, they were only chicken wings. What? You can't put me in jail just because I was nickpicking a picnicking with a Shut lady? Up. Huh? Putting him in jail is the right punishment for woman guzzlers like you. I want to see you hang, you, you. This is just a fiendish trap, Sheriff. Oh, speaking of traps, I remember not far away from here is the office of a foundation. A fountain? We have a fountain here? Paldy, don't talk rubbish. That's not in the text. A foundation huh? is something where you can donate money for good deeds. Ah, yeah. I see. Mm -hmm. Go on, then. Yeah. If the defendant offers to wriggle out of it with a very generous donation, then he could... Oh, no way! Suspicion of murder is suspicion of murder, and guzzling women is guzzling women! But, Sheriff, it is a foundation where people donate money for poor old me this year. Oh, well, this is something different. My old age pension sure is lousy. Yeah, come on. Come on with me. Come on. Come on. Dr. Lexington, I'll see you in a minute. The show begins. Stand by. Okay, Payoff. Hey, Lexington, is this the foundation for poor old needy sheriffs? Yes, it is. But we must wait for Mr. Chewing. Here I am. Dr. Lexington, this gentleman wants to donate two million dollars. But I don't have any money. Wait just a moment there. Here, I have a check for $2 million for your crater field. Just hand it over to Dr. Lexington, and you are a free man. Is that okay, Sheriff? Well, then, it's not really okay today. But if one day I end up poor and old and needy, that's what it will be. First, you must prove to me that your wife, Blue Ellen, isn't alive anymore. Huh? The other way around. You must prove that she is still alive. Hmm. I'll do it. Hey, hey, wait, wait. I'm the sheriff. I'm the sheriff. Oh, oh. <laughs> Let's follow them. <laughs> Dr. Lexington, I think Blue Ellen must vanish immediately. Come with me. Blue Ellen! Blue Ellen! Hope they are. Oh, I think we don't have enough towels in here. What? That's impossible. Yeah. Huh. Hey, you stay in there until I let you out. Famila! Famila! And be as quiet as a mouse. Room, town <laughs> little badges, nah. evidence, bearing witness. Where is she? Where is she? Well, my sister-in-law Famila's in the bathroom. But my beloved Blue Ellen is untraceable. Untraceable? Yes, that's the proof. Now you must donate Quiet. the two million. this is the sheriff speaking. If this gentleman has eaten the lady, then where did it happen? Yes, where? At huh? the crossing. Uh, uh, that means that the victim's bones should still be at the crossing. What? What? Uh, I see. No, no. Nah. I don't want this. I couldn't bear to see the bones of my beloved wife. <laughs> but I declare it's got to be done. In the name of the law. Come on, we got to visit the scene of the crime. Let's go. Grr. Oh, this is getting real ticklish. Have you got any ideas, Lexington? Not yet. And music. Camera zoom directly in on the helpless looking pay or We continue at the crossing. And what is this? Huh? Another bone. Oh, uh, boy. Another bone, yeah. <laughs> oh, what kind of bones are these? Uh, I have no idea, but they're just the right kind of things we oh, need yeah. here. It really wasn't me. If bones are all that's left of the woman, well, then I guess that means... I must have done it for love. Uh, I didn't notice. Blue Ellen. Defendant, if you donate two million dollars for poor old needy sheriffs, uh, then you will be free. Give it to me. 
take it, trickster. The Foundation says thanks for the generous donation. You're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. And all poor old needy sheriffs, thank you too. Gentlemen. Now you're free. Let me invite you to my new possession, Crater Field, where I will produce a whole lot of oil in the near future. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Producing lots of oil for my dry crater field? <laughs> Hello, Hello, Mr. Burns. Ah! A ghost! Where did you come from? From the restroom. I was locked up there. But, but, whose bones are these? They're from the chicken wings we had at the picnic here. What? These aren't your bones, then? No, I have all my bones with me. <laughs> oh, I want my money back right away! <laughs> it smells exactly like the clothes of my sister-in-law, Famila. Hmm. It looks as if the previous owner has cracked a bottle of Italian salad oil here. Yeah, huh? Huh? What? Salad oil? The finest Italian oil, yeah. Oh, 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 I'll be blown. I don't believe it. Oh, salad oil for two million dollars. Oh. Hey, look, she's alive. Give me my money back, and this man has to be arrested. Calm down. Here, you have your check back, and everything is as it was before. And what if I end up poor old and needy? Oh, I'm a pitiful sheriff. Mr. Burns, if you give me the check for two million, Crater Field will be yours again. Clock Burns, you're not going to pay two million dollars for this dry salad oil field, are you? You keep out of this. <gasps> Clock Burns, just give me back the two million dollars I gave you earlier for your Crater Field. Oh. I will never do it. I will only pay half a million at the most. Half a million? Yeah. You're plunging me into misery. Yeah. I'm bankrupt, and so's my dear wife. Oh, don't worry about me. For your beautiful wife, Blue Ellen, I will raise it up to a million. That's my last offer. If I were you, I would agree to that. I agree. This is the most expensive salad oil I ever bought. One million dollars a bottle. Scribble, scribble. Well, Mr. Chewing, well, here. Thank you for the most charming picnic with your charming wife at the charming crushing, uh, crossing song. And for the best business deal I've ever made in my whole life. Oh, oh, and oh, this is the oh. end of our fairy tale. Yeah. And the good guy has won in the That's end. Me. And the bad guy has been punished. That guy. And so I say, final music and bye, bye. for today! Bye. Well, people, time for fairy tales. Oh, yes. The light is transforming our studio into a mysterious fairy tale place. Yes, it is. Mm. Hey, put the cap away, will you? People, fairy tale time. Hey, stop playing with the cap, huh? But you must tell the people. Yes, I wanted to do that later, but you're always having your way. When I'm wearing my cap, it means I want to explain something concerning the fairy tale. And when I put my top hat on, the play is being performed. Yes, friends, who plays which part today? Hmm. Let's begin with the shopkeeper, Kompowski. Kompowski? Yeah. What kind of shopkeeper are you? I'm running a kind of small shop. What kind of shop is it? A small supermarket in Fairyland, where you can buy whatever you need. Uh-huh. And you? Who are you? I work as a miller, and over there is my mill. And who are you? I? I'm a baker who's stirring his dough. This is my bakery. I am Lulu. Ah, Lulu. And who are you? I am the mother of the young kids. Ah, and what kind of kids are they? They are children of a goat mother, and I have seven kids. And I'm Freddy. I play the youngest kid, number seven. Uh, so... I am Mona, and I play the youngest kid, number seven. Huh? I'm Teddy, and I play the seventh young kid. Uh, and impossible. I am Lexi. I play the young kid, too. The youngest one, uh, number seven. Lexi, Is that okay? friends. What's going on here? 
The seventh young kid can only be played by one. I'm Kazi, and I'm a young kid too. Uh, I'd really love to play the youngest kid, number seven, but since they're all fighting for it, I'll play kid number one. Is that okay? Ah, at last. Thank you, Kazi. The only sensible one around, except me. I am Lisa, and I will play the seventh young kid. No, not again. No. Yes. All the other young kids are boring, but the part of the seventh young kid is the best. Exactly. I'm Eddie, and I'll play the youngest kid, number seven. Oh, uh, Spencer, it was your fault because you told them all you would play the seven young kids. You should have said you are the first, you the second, and so on until number seven. Don't tell that to somebody who hasn't been sick like me. Young kids, buzz oh. off and come back when you've decided who'll be kid number seven. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, 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 I'm I'm back. I don't mind going away. Once I'm like that, I like just being in the It's great. We both be seven. What shall we do now? Let us simply begin. Hmm? Okay. Mm hmm. Okay. Willy nilly. Oh, who is Willy? Willy nilly means. Uh, I'm not sure. The ending, remember? But first, we can start with the rehearsed beginning. Okay, people. The wolf and the seven young kids. And me? Oh. Polly. <sighs> I've almost forgotten you in this chaos here. And you're playing the leading role. Excuse me. Poldy, tell the people who you are. Brrr, I am Baldy, the most beautiful young dragon in the world, and I play the youngest little wolf. No, I mean the youngest little kid, the seventh one, the smallest. But Baldy, what? If all the others want to play it, I want it too. Hmm. But you, but you're not wearing a young kid's costume. You look mm -hmm. like, like. Uh... Yes, but the other one, who looks a bit like me, is the evil one in the story. Yeah, Baldy, not you as well. I was sick, you know. And yes, I was and just because you were sick and couldn't talk to me, I must play the eater now. Mm-hmm, but Baldy, yeah. who else could play this part? Yes, who? Can you imagine Kazzy playing the wolf's part? <laughs> Kazzy, no. Hmm. And, and Lexi? No way, not Lexi. Mm -hmm. Yes. In our small village, there's only one perfect performer for the wolf's part. You, Baldy, the most beautiful young wolf in the world. Uh, well then, but we haven't rehearsed the ending yet. The ending? The ending will work somehow, I'm sure. Yeah, as long as you don't eat the kids for real. No, I'll make sure of that. Now, come on. Here, here, put this fake belly on. Uh, you look much fatter then, huh? Okay, I play the evil hungry wolf, but the fake belly I'll put on later. It wobbles so terribly. I mm. see. Ah, thank you, Poldy. Mm -hmm. Come on. And, and now... Mm -hmm. Go. And stand by for your first entrance. Yeah. I hope you've learnt your text, huh? Uh-huh. Open the door, dear children. Your mother is here and... And, oh yeah, I know it. Bye! And, bye! Mm. So... Well then... Uh, I think we can finally start now. Seems to be a good idea. The wolf... And the seven young kids. Once upon a time, there was an old goat. She had seven little kids and loved them all, just as a mother loves her children. <laughs> Children, dear, I'm going into the woods to get some food for you. Be on your guard for the wolf. If he gets in, he will eat up all of you, even your skin and hair. The villain often disguises himself. But you will recognize him at once by his rough voice and his black feet. Now you take care of yourself while I go and get the food. Mother, dear, we will take uh, care of ourselves. the black feet. You may go away without any worries. <laughs> yeah. I hope I can trust you, so take good care of yourselves. <laughs> Bye. 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 It's Mother. Not that early. The wolf. 
Open the door, children dear. Your mother is here and has brought something for each one of you. We will not open the door. <laughs> Our mother has a soft and gentle voice. Mm -hmm. But your voice is rough. You are the wolf. Darn! You are not our mother. <laughs> <laughs> that was a flop. And what shall I do now? Ah! Hello, shopkeeper. Hello to you, sir. Do you have a remedy for a rough voice? Yeah. How about some chalk? Huh? What? Chalk. When you eat some chalk, your voice becomes tender and soft. Yes, that's exactly what I need. Then you must eat some chalk, sir. Yeah, but what does chalk taste like? Chalk tastes like chalk. What do you expect? Oh, I see. And how much should I eat to get a soft voice? One piece. It will change your voice immediately into the most tender and sweet voice in the world. Here. There. It only costs you three fifty. dollars well, One moment. Yeah. Thank you. Open the door, my children, dear. My dear children. <laughs> my dear children. <laughs> this could be mother. We need some food. We, we, yeah. we must be careful. Open the door, children dear. Your mother is here and has brought something for each one of you. Well, that does sound like her voice. Let's open the little window first. Oh, 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 no, we won't open the door. Our mother doesn't have a black foot like you. You are the wolf. Double darn it. Back to the shopkeeper. No, I know something better. I will go to the baker, put some dough on it, and then to the miller, put white flour on it, yeah. Hi, baker. <laughs> Help! I've sprained my foot. Rub some dough on it. Quick! Well, dear Mr. Wolf, where does it hurt? On the right paw. Is that okay, Mr. Wolf? Yes, it is. And you, sprinkle some white flour on my foot for me, will you? Uh -uh. Do it! You're not, you're not getting any flour for me. Uh, I don't know what you're up to. What did you say? If you won't do it, I will eat you up! There! That frightened the miller, and he made the paw white for him. Yes, that's the way people are. Oh! <laughs> well, Paldy, that was a great job. Thank you. You're a fantastic wolf. Mm. Are you pleased, uh -huh. Mr. Blue Miller? Up to now, we've practiced everything over and over. But now comes the eating, and this we haven't practiced. Oh, Poldy, I hope you're not backing out of it. No, how can I first be evil and then fly away like a little robin? <laughs> but <laughs> like now, a robin. I have my <laughs> wolfish pride, and probably... <laughs> probably what? I won't say. <laughs> you don't cause me problems, Poldy. Mm. Remember, I was quite ill. No problem. No trouble. Just fun. Now, um, you must put your fake belly on. No, it wobbles so terribly. I'll put it on right before the eating. Okay, uh -huh. I'll bring it with me. Uh -huh. And now hurry, you evil villain, Poldy Wolf. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> now it will work. Open the door for me, children. Your dear mother has come home and has brought every one of you something oh, from the woods. Oh, yeah. Show us your walk so we may know that oh, you yeah, are yeah. our dear little mother. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 Uh-huh. That's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Teddy, open the door. Mommy! 
Hey, Pauldy, what are you doing there? You are the wolf. Who's going to eat me now? You're changing the whole story. People, you know what? I'll decide now who will play the part of the seventh young king. Me! 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 Hold it. Where's Paldy, by the way? He's there, in the clock case. In the... Uh-huh. In the... You don't say. Occupied! Paldy, that's just silly. I am the seventh young kid. And who's playing the wolf instead? I play the wolf, too. Just watch this. Well, my sweet little kid. Are you the big bad wolf? <laughs> yes, and I will eat you up. <laughs> you will not because I am in the clock case. Meh. <laughs> uh, but, Baldy, you can't do that to me. I was so sick, you know. How sick were you? Very, very sick. And besides, you're ruining the whole fairy tale. No, 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 no. I don't want to be blamed for a ruined fairy tale. Give me the fake belly. Here it is. It's like a glove. <laughs> but it's such a bad ending for the wolf. You just have to play the wolf, Paldi. It's not for real. Uh, okay. So I'll play the bad ending, too. Yeah. And who will play the seventh young kid? Me! 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 Over here! It's Just me. a moment. Kazi, who do yes. you want to play? I want to play the seventh kid, too. I thought he played the first. Oh. And why didn't you oh. join in the hullabaloo earlier? Huh? Huh? Because it's not noble. Not noble? noble? <laughs> who does he think he is? Noble. Well, I would say Kazi. Kazi shall play the seventh young kid. No! 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 no, 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 no. Uh, I'm wearing my top hat again. No contradiction, please. Oh. And now everybody out, oh. and then come back frightened. Oh. 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 Totally wrong. Oh. 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 Look at me. Seven's written all over me. Well, the guzzling scene from the very beginning. Imagine the wolf standing in the door. I'll start reading. The kids were terrified and wanted to hide. One jumped under the table. The second into the bed. The third into the stove. The fourth into the kitchen. The fifth into the cupboard. The sixth under the wash basin. And the seventh went to hide in the clock case. And the wolf Hunger! Found them all. And without further ado, he swallowed them down his throat, one after the other. Number two. Not find. Oh, 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 how tired I am. Ah, oh, what a nice spot for a nap. After satisfying his appetite, the wolf went outside and lay down under a tree in the green meadow, 
and fell asleep. Soon afterwards, the old goat came home from the woods. Ah, what a sight she saw there. The door stood wide open. She looked for her children, but they were nowhere to be found. She called them by name, one after the other, but no one answered. Eddie? Mona? Teddy? Lexi? Freddy? Lisa? Cassie? Mother dear, I'm hiding in the <gasps> clock case. Oh, Cassie. Cassie, my Cassie dear. She took the kid out, and it told her that the wolf had come and had eaten up all the others. You can just imagine how she cried for her poor children. Finally, in her despair, she went outside, and the youngest kid ran with her. They came to the meadow. And there lay the wolf by the tree, snoring so loudly that the branches shook. She looked at him from all sides and saw that something was moving and jiggling in his full belly. Good gracious! Is it possible that my poor children, whom he has swallowed down for his supper, yeah. can still be alive? Yeah. Cassie, run to the castle! <laughs> Did you say castle? To our home, and fetch yeah. scissors and a needle and thread, and ah. hurry, please. I will, Mother dear. Don't you dare pick me with a needle or shut me with the scissors or I will beat you for real. You mean prick and cut and eat, Paldy? Yes and uh. yes and yes. Paldy, you haven't eaten them up for real, and I will not prick you for real. A plague is a plague. All right, then. Here, Mother dear. Thank you. And then... Then the goat cut open the monster's paunch. She had scarcely made one cut before a little kid stuck its head out. Hello, Mommy. And as she continued... Hello, Mommy. One after the other, all six jumped out. And they were all still alive. They were not even hurt. For in his greed, the monster had swallowed them down whole. How happy they were. Ah. Go now and look for some big stones. We will fill the beast's stomach with them while he is still asleep. <laughs> yeah, we'll do that, Mummy. Hey, tell me, how big are b b big stones, huh? huh? Oh, brother, you don't know how big big stones are? The big stones are bigger than oh. small stones. Got it? Uh -huh. Let's go! Oh. And use the cardboard <laughs> stones or I'll eat you all up! <laughs> Spencer, help me. How will I do this? Oh, quite easily, yeah. yeah. Here's a zipper. You can oh, put the stones see. in here. Look here, uh, a big stone. Hmm? The seven kids quickly brought the stones, and they put as many of them, there you go, into his stomach mm, as it would hold. Here we go. There's another one. Just there. There. That's enough. That's enough, I say. Lulu, the now the needle and thread. Spencer, the zipper. Oh, yeah. Are you ready? Well, then, the mother hurriedly sewed him up again. He was not aware of anything and never once stirred. Finished. Okay, the wolf finally awoke and got up onto his legs. Because the stones in his stomach made him very thirsty, he wanted to go to a well and get a drink. But when he began to walk and move about... Rumble, tumble, 
the stones in his stomach knocked against each other and rattled. Then he cried out. What rumbles and tumbles inside of me? I thought it was kids, but it's stones that they be. Yeah. When he got to the well and leaned over to drink the water, <laughs> You'll never guess, but the heavy stones pulled him in, and he drowned miserably. For real? Yes. Oh, no, no, no not oh, for real. Okay. There's no water yeah, in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Act, One, Baldy. two, three. Ah! Splash. Glug, glug, glug. The wolf is dead. What a deep well this is. The wicked, wicked wolf is dead. Long live the seven kids. But where is Paldy, by the way? He's alive, we must admit. The wolf is dead. The kids have stayed alive. The wolf is dead. The wolf is dead. The story turned out all right. The wicked, wicked wolf is dead. No, Paldy is not turned pale. I did not fear the scissors here, it was only a fairy tale. The wolf is dead, the kids have stayed alive. The wolf is dead, the wolf is dead, the story